for you one year. All the glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Today I feel led to read Epicenians chapter 4. Epicenians chapter 4 from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Let's begin. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the voca vocation wherewith ye are called. Vocation is another name for job. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherewith, wherefore he saith, when he ascendeth up on high, he lead captivity captive and gave, and gave gifts unto them, unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? but that he also descendeth first in, into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. They're talking about Lord Jesus Christ here. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, ev 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 and some priesters and, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, in unto the measure of the of the statue of the of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's correct. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. And remember, vanity is, is like, you know, making yourself beautiful, and like, looking at yourself constantly, like, I'm just thinking of like people that cosplay and put all those wigs and makeup and take dozens of photos and stare at themselves in the mirror all the time and say, oh, I'm so pretty, I'm so pretty. And like make themselves, and they're like, yeah, that's vanity. Whereas you shouldn't act like that. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance. That is in them because of the blindness of their heart. That's right. People that turn away from God, their understanding is darkened. They don't understand God's word, so their their understanding is darkness and not and it's not right. They're alienated from God through their ignorance, so they ignore the Bible. They ignore the truth. They believe in this false reality and all this fake false information, and they believe and. And living in sin and having all this makeup and doing all these things and tie-dyeing their dog's fur 
and collecting all this jewelry and traveling to all these places and doing whatever they want. You know, and they're blind, they don't realize it, they're ignorant to the truth. And that's because of the blindness of their heart. Who being fast feeling have given themselves over unto lavishness to work all uncleanness with greediness. They're very greedy, if you probably didn't realize that. People that are totally into the world are very greedy. Well, I'll just give you examples. Say you got this girl named Alicia. Alicia loves collecting anime things. She's very greedy. And if she sees something she likes that's anime related, say a Pokeball that some kid has, and the kid drops it and, uh, you know, runs off, to go look at some dandelions, she grabs the Pokeball and steals it because even though she doesn't need the thing, she wants it because she can add it to her collection. And she has this, when she goes home, she comes back to this humongous collection. She's got Yu-Gi-Oh! cardboard cutout of Seto Kaiba right there, right when she walks through the door into her apartment. She's got anime hanging off the ceiling, on the walls anime design carpet she even tie-dyed her dog's fur to look like some some dog from one of the uh, animated movies that she watched the whole place is completely animated filled and it's and she's greedy and she wants more and more and more of it but in reality what she wants is the holy spirit but she's so blind and ignorant that she doesn't realize it and so Alicia continues to collect the stuff until she's completely suffocated in it. Okay, let's continue. Alright, where did I leave off at? But ye have not so learned, Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. That's right, you have to let go of your uh, corrupt, uh, uh, deceitful self and let it go. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the devil let let him that soul steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands to the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth let no corrupt Communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice that means you shouldn't have you sh you can have anger but you can't be bitter you can't just sit there in bitterness and rot and and feel angry well we'll just give you an example we got this this guy named diamond and he feels all this bitterness and anger because his parents got divorced when he was 12 and he hold it on to it his whole life and became a very bitter and old and angry old man and he, he snapped the kids down on the street and he would wave his cane at people and he was always angry and nasty because he was so filled, filled with bitterness because he never got over the fact his parents got divorced when he was 12 and wrath wrath is violence anger be wrathful we can give you another example. We got this guy named David, and he, he's just he can't control his temper. Anything ticks him off, even a, a screw loose in the uh, on the you know the little thing that holds the door together. 
him loose in his apartment and he just got really angry and he kicked and smashed the door and David just kept going and going and he was full of wrath and, and violence and then one day he, he was fighting with gas pump and things wouldn't go well and it caught on fire and he was thrown in jail for igniting the gas station and David was full of wrath. Anger is like you get angry with somebody there's righteous anger, which is like anger against uh, things that are, you know, against Lord Jesus Christ. And like, you know, abortions could be righteous anger. Whereas uh, unrighteous anger is like, we'll just say you got this uh, girl named Paulina and her husband forgot to put an apple in her lunch. So when she gets home from work, she's so angry at her husband for forgetting to put the apple in her lunch, which is a simple mistake. She kicks the chair and starts ranting and raving and decides she's walking out with walking out the door with all her anger and leaving him for a week because he forgot to do that. It's because she gave into her anger to a complete completeness that led into led her to be wrathful as well and violent. Which is not right. God doesn't want you to be like that. And clown, evil speaking is to speak curse words and lies and and to do those things. You should not do that. You shouldn't. You should do and should not. And be ye kind to one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So St. Paulina's hus husband has to deal with his wife who has a problem with, with anger and wrath. He has to continue to be tender-hearted to her, forgiving her. But at the same time, he should be tolerant of her bad behavior. He should point out her bad behavior and lead her to where she can get help. Lead her to a counselor, maybe a counselor at their marriage. Or somebody maybe a minister or somebody to help her or, or and the most important person that could help her would be praying to God and send, and asking God to send help to help her out but if it gets to a point where she's throwing chairs at him and everything and and going completely um mad with with uh, wrath calling the cops and having her prosecuted for abuse and plan maybe spending some some time in the slammer may change it, change her behavior, especially hanging out with other people that are in the slammer, if you know what I mean, the prison system. It might um, help her out, but he should continue to forgive her, and forgive forgive Paulina for her anger and her wrath, and understand that she has a problem and that she needs help. Maybe she needs a uh, heart healing and deliverance, leader. Uh, try to lead her in that direction but it might come to a point where she's so wrathful that she's f causing physical harm and you need to take a serious a really serious action which may mean you know calling the police or something because you shouldn't be putting up with someone who's extremely abusive in no way or shape or form because you may forgive that person but you shouldn't tolerate But it also goes by your scenario. Some people are living in places like important places where they like they can't support themselves without their husband, and they have to put up with his abuse, and they can't get out. They have to take it with the Lord. Like you could be living a living in a, one of the one another nation, by the way. I think it was a documentary I saw a long time ago about some woman. She, I think, she was living in Uganda and she had an abusive husband, and she stayed with him because she she needed his support to help support her and her kids, well, their kids. But she put up with it, and it does. Uh, but and she continued to forgive him, but she put up with it because she needed the support. But prayer is the first place you should go, and then you should continue 
I think to nowadays in society, the way it's designed, we're too isolated. Uh, we're not like a community like we used to, where we used to, families used to work together and stand together. Families are very much divided. I know people that, including from my own family, they have relatives and family that lives all over the place. And they're just completely isolated from everyone else. Like a, a friend of mine has a son that lives out like in Kentucky or something. And he lives out there with his wife all by themselves raising their kid. They don't have any family out there. And her daughter is planning to move out to like Colorado. And she doesn't have any family out there that I have ever heard of or know of. But and people are like living in places and not having their, you know, their family support anymore, like they used to. Like, when how my Armenian ancestors got out of Armenia is because they all worked together. They all pulled together the whole entire family tree. The grandparents, the great-grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, they all pulled together and pulled, piled their money together to help a few of them escape and come to United States America to have a new life and a better life to escape the Armenian genocide. But, yeah. I'm just going on another one of my ravels again. Thank you for listening. This was Blue Star Warrior One. Peace be with you.